Thank you so much for that introduction. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. Um, it's truly an honor to be here. And um, I thank God for this. Um, Pastor Lydia, thank you for being with me. I really appreciate it. Um, everyone, God is faithful. God is faithful. And so um, I was looking, like you said, I was looking over the history of your organization and the scripture was um, Esther 4 and 14, for such a time as this. And so to combine the unstoppable faith, how we got here to the movement and talk about the movement of the Christian women in media, my theme tonight is going to be, I have a mandate on my life and it's for such a time as this. So let us pray. Um, Father God, we thank you for this opportunity, God. We thank you for your presence in this place on tonight. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, for you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So you guys know um, your scripture, Esther 4 and 14. It says, for if you remain silent at the time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to a royal position for such a time as this. When I go back and I talk about unstoppable faith, that ministry was birthed in a time of trials and tribulation. I was diagnosed with stage three Hodgkin's lymphoma. And after going through six rounds of treatment, that's six months of chemotherapy, 12 treatments, the cancer was recurrent and inoperable. And when the doctor tell you that the cancer is recurrent and inoperable, that means that there's nothing else medically they can do but a research test. So my research was a stem cell transplant, and it was autologous, and that means that it was so aggressive that we didn't have time to find a donor to give me stem cells. So they collected my stem cells, froze my stem cells, and gave them back to me. The process of freezing my stem cells, there was no way medically to test the stem cells to see if they collected good cells, cancer cells, bad cells. But I had to believe that the blood of Jesus still works. And I'm standing here to testify that the blood of Jesus still works because there was no way medically to test to see if the cells worked, were there good cells or bad cells, but they had to freeze the cells. I received three more rounds of chemotherapy. So for the month of July, August, and September, I spent a week in the hospital getting chemotherapy 24 hours for seven days a week. And on September 2014, I went to Emory and I stayed at Emory for 30 days. And I had my transplant on the 22nd of September. And that's why um, the conference is held in September. September is the birthing month and we're gonna talk about that too. But the 22nd of um, September, I had my transplant and had a PET scan back in November and the doctor said that they would call me for Christmas to give me my test results. And Christmas came and the call didn't come. But from Christmas to New Year's Eve, I prayed and fasted and I said, God, I give you a complete yes, you heal my body. I don't wanna go into another year dealing with cancer because we dealt with cancer from October 2013. As a matter of fact, I went to the doctor for my first visit on September the 12th, 2013. And I remember it because it was the day after 9-11. So the day after 9-11 in 2013, I walked into the doctor's office and the only symptom I had was I was coughing. There was nothing else going on. What you see today is how I looked. I just had a perm at that time, but I didn't look sick. I never looked sick. I mean, I can show you pictures of the process that God allowed me to go through, and it was just a movement. Just like you guys have a movement here, it was a movement that God allowed me to go through. And so Christmas came, no call came, and I didn't share with my family that I was expecting a call because when you've been through 12 rounds of treatments and the doctor says that your cancer is recurrent, 
if your faith is not strong, you will not believe God that you're going to live through it. So I didn't want to get my hopes up with my family nor my children that we we're expecting to call on Christmas and Christmas came and the call didn't come. But God is so faithful and he honors his word. So on New Year's Eve, around 4.30 in the afternoon, I was um, at the doctor's office getting my eyes examined and my phone was in my purse and the Lord said, pick up your phone. And I saw Mr. Call and it was 404. And I was like, that had to be Emory calling me. So I set the phone there and the young lady was standing, you know, sitting there checking my glasses and everything, getting them um, fitted. And I told her, I said, I just missed a call and I believe God that was a call from Emory. I said, so you're gonna hear the report today because I just know God is gonna give me a call because it's the 31st and I'm going to church tonight. And the phone rang again and I answered it and it was the oncologist, Dr. Jalila. And his response to me was, I did not want you going into another year not knowing you was cancer free. Yeah. So my thing is, when you pray to God, expect God to answer. So many times we don't expect God to answer, so we don't get the answer that we're expecting. I believe God that I was not going to go into another year dealing with cancer. And the answer came the last day of the year, around 4.30 in the afternoon, that I was cancer free. So fast forward, that's how Unstoppable Faith was birthed. That's how Unstoppable Faith was launched. And the, the thing was, when I was first diagnosed, I remember God speaking to me, you're going to write a book. And I was like, hey, why would I write a book about my journey? And God said, somebody else will need to know that regardless of what the diagnosis is, you can live through it. When you have faith in God, you can live through any situation. It doesn't matter what the report is. It's like whose report you're going to believe. And I choose to believe what God had already spoken over my life. And I remember um, back in, I think it was like October. If you, anyone see, I have like a mark on my neck right here. And it was probably like the 10th of October. And um, I woke up and showering and the Lord spoke to me and said, you have a mass on your neck. And that was the first time that I had a symptom of something that I can actually see that was that can I can associate with the cancer diagnosis. Before it was just a random cough. But that morning, because that night when I went to bed, there was nothing on my neck. But that morning I woke up, there was a mass on my neck like the size of an orange. And it didn't shake me because I knew God, when he told me that it was there, I knew he had a remedy for it. I knew it was already cured. I knew it was already handled. So I can honestly tell you all that whatever you're believing God for, don't waver in your faith. Do not doubt God. I mean, in this season, I mean, we're in the ninth month, and it's so crazy because I was like, God, it's the ninth month, the 19th day of 2019. And so I had to look up and say, okay, what is the significance of 19? And 19 means faith. Yeah. The number 19 symbolizes faith. It means that we will have a better life, a full of love and peace. So I need you to tell yourself that I have a mandate on my life, that I will live a better life than what I lived before I came in here on tonight, full of love and full of peace. Because when we look at the ninth month, if you got pregnant in January, in September, physically you will have a baby. So when the year came in, I'm certain each one of us said something that we were believing God for this year. And even if it has not come to pass yet, don't give up on your dream. Don't give up on what you prayed for. Do not give up on the vision that God gave you. Because God is able to bring it to pass. It can happen when you least expect it, but you have to be expecting God to do it. And... She was talking about the conference. The conference is September the 28th, next week. And maybe like two weeks ago, the Lord just dropped in my spirit 2020 faith promotion. So I have a promotion going on, and it's 2020. It's $20.20. But the significance of 2020 is that you have to see what you're believing from the eyesight of God. 
You have to see it how God see it, not how you see it. Because how we see it is not what God has already spoken of our life. So if God said that we are the head and not the tail, you have to see yourself as the head and not the tail. If the Lord says that you're the lender and not the borrower, you have to see yourself as the lender and not the borrower. If the Lord says that you're above and not beneath, you are. You're more than a conqueror. You are. So everything that God has spoken over our life, we have to agree with heaven to see the manifestation on earth. And if we have not seen the manifestation of it, just like some of you are writing now, you got to go back and start back writing what you spoke before. And what happens so many times is that we start speaking negativity, so we block what God is doing in our life. And we don't think about it because if you don't have the faith that I have, and I say, I don't know how I'm going to make it, you agree with me, well, I just cancel what I said that I know I'm going to make it because I got God with me. I'm with God is with me. So, so many times we got to be very careful of who we connect to, especially in this season. When you're believing God for some great things, you can't have people around you that don't believe God the level that you believe God. Because what's going to happen, they're going to they're gonna make you think that what God's spoken is not going to come to pass. And God is able to do it. He's willing to do it. You have a mandate on your life for it to come to pass. But because you have talked with someone that does not have the faith that you have, then you don't see the manifestation of it. And you have someone that God give you a vision and it's so big that you don't know how it's going to come to pass. And you tell someone, you'll be like, they'll say to you, oh, that wasn't God. Well, why would the devil give you something that's great? Why would he? I mean, that's just not his character. He come to kill, steal, and destroy. So if God has given you a vision, you can't allow anyone else to take that vision away from you. You can't allow yourself to take that vision away from you because in the midnight hour, when the things may not seem like it's going to come to pass, you start hearing yourself saying, you can't do that. That's not going to come to pass. If I did not believe God that by his stripes I was already healed, I would not be standing here today telling my testimony. Because I can promise you, while I was going through my journey, there are some funerals that I went to for people who I told, you don't have to die in this season. But they choose to die. Because they said, I can't do this. The first day that I went for my first treatment, there was a family that asked me to pray with them because their grandfather, father, and husband took his last treatment. His second treatment. I haven't even started chemotherapy yet. And they said, can you come outside? Because they knew me. Can you come outside in the hallway and pray? And I'm asking God, I'm going to pray, and he's not even going to take no more treatments. He's ready to die? And they want me to pray? And I'm like, what am I going to say to them? Because he's made a decision that this is it. And I had to say, we're going to believe God. Enjoy him. Love him as long as God keeps life in his body. But he's made a decision that this is not what he want to do. And I had to go back in there and sit down and wait till they call my name to start a treatment. And every treatment was like four and a half hours. Even when the side effects came and I wanted to give up, I had to go look in that mirror and said, if you're going to live, you have to sit there and take these treatments. But if you want to die, get up and walk out and say, this is not what you want to do. But that's not the call. That's not the mandate that God had on my life. So each one of us, we have a mandate that God has placed on our lives. And it's up to us to fulfill those mandates. It's for us to make sure that we connect with the right people. You know, I'm reminded of the, the man that was paralyzed and he had the four friends that when he couldn't get to Jesus because of the crowd, it was so crowded, they tore the roof off. You need some friends in your life that don't mind tearing some stuff down so you can get what you need from Jesus. You just can't connect with anybody in this season. You got to make sure that you're connected with the right people. You got to make sure that they're talking the same language that you're talking. And when they're not talking the language, give them the opportunity to change their talk. 
But if they don't change their talk, give them permission that you be absent from that conversation. You have that authority, you have that power. You don't have to sit there and listen to negativity. You don't have to sit there and listen to something that goes completely opposite of the word of God, completely opposite of your faith. You have that authority in Christ to walk away from it. Not that you're giving up on that person. It's just that my destiny is greater than what you're talking about. And I need to see the manifestation of what I'm believing God for. You have to believe that without a shadow of a doubt. You can't let nothing or no one make you waver in your faith in God. You cannot. Even yourself. Many times I had to encourage myself. Many days you're going to have to encourage yourself. Many days you're going to have to. You're going to have to talk to yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. Because Satan is talking to you. Yep. He's talking. Mm -hmm. He's telling you can't do it. He says not. First he tell you that's not God. That's the first thing he says. That's not God. Then he said you can't do it. Then he said it's impossible. Why you? Somebody in your family tried it. It didn't work. One of your friends tried it. It didn't work. But you have to kind of act everything that has been spoken that does not line up with the word of God. Because he only honors his word. He doesn't honor our emotions because our emotions change. He honors his word. So whatever you have need of, whatever you're standing, whatever you're praying for, what does the word of God say about it? And that's what you believe. You don't believe on what somebody else tell you unless it manifests, it lines up with the word of God. So the conference started in 2016. Um, this is the fourth year for the conference. And like she said, every year it, it gets bigger and it gets better. But I will not stand here. I'll be wrong to tell you that you don't go through pain with it. <laughs> you do go through some pain. So that's just like a baby. The first time you find out you're pregnant, you're excited. But you're not showing. No one know you're pregnant. But you, you got the little paperwork showing that you're pregnant. So we get to like maybe the fourth month, the fifth month six months, some things starts changing in the natural. So when you're pregnant with destiny in the spirit, around the fourth or the fifth month of your vision, things starts changing. That means you got to pray a little more. You got to fast a little more. You got to cut back on some things that's distracting you. So by the seventh, the eighth month, you're really showing in this natural you're showing that you're pregnant. So in the spirit, you're showing that you're pregnant. Because if I come up to you and I have not really been praying and fasting and I'm in the middle of birthing something, my reaction to you, if I have not been praying and fasting, you're going to see a reaction that's not godly. So just like in the natural, we go and we take our prenatal vitamins, we go to the doctor and get our checkup, just like in the spirit. When you're birthing something, you have to make sure you stay connected to the right people. You stay in your prayer. You stay in fasting. And even when it feels like it's difficult, when it feels like it's impossible, even when the pain is very hard, you don't change your position. You don't stop the assignment because it's uncomfortable. That means that I'm pregnant and what I'm about to birth is so big and it's so great that Satan is doing everything he can to stop me. But you have to make up in your mind that I choose not to be stopped. No matter what it is, I choose not to be stopped. I choose that what God has given me, I'm going to bring it to pass. So by the ninth month, we're in September. And everything that could go wrong is happening. But you have to remember that it's the same God that was with you when you did not show you was pregnant. So just because the symptoms are there now and it's getting harder and just like labor pains, do you breathe or you push? Or you breathe and you push? <laughs> you have to decide what you're going to do. Do you pray and you cry? You pray, you cry, you travail, you worship. I mean, what do you do? But you got to find that place, what you need to do in order to continue on what God said. 
Because the only person that can stop your destiny is you. I can say whatever I want to say, but it's up to you to believe it. You have to believe for yourself that I'm pregnant with destiny. I have a mandate on my life. And it's for such a time as this. Somebody need to see Jesus. Somebody got to see him. And why not through your life? Why not through your testimony? Why not through your tests? Why not through your trials? I mean, everywhere we go, we have to be in the mindset of Jesus is with me and somebody's reading me. They may not read Genesis. They may not read it, but they're going to read you. So what are they reading when they see you? They should be able to read whatever they see on Sunday. They should be able to see that on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Don't matter where you're at. If you're at the school, they should be able to see it. If we're in the coffee shop, they should be able to see it. If you're at the beauty salon, they should be able to see it. We have to be consistent in our walk with God because God is consistent with us. I mean, he's faithful to us, so we have to be faithful to him. And somebody will be drawn to Christ because of our walk, because of the mandate on our life. We can't take it for granted. We can't take it lightly. We have to be about our father's business. And I mean, so many times, we never know. I mean, like, how would I would have known that she was watching my Facebook page? How would I know she would have went to my website because it's on my Facebook page? So what if my website didn't match my Facebook page? What if she wasn't saved? And she saw my Facebook page, then she went to my website, and it says, Overcomer, Survivor, Unstoppable Faith, A Woman of God. But then my Facebook page, be like, who is she? I mean, our Facebook page is our ministry. So what are we ministering through Facebook? I mean, we have to look at the total picture when it comes to our life. Every day we get up, every day the Lord allows us to see another day is a day to make his name great. Greater. And everything has to line up. Everything has to be consistent. My Facebook page, my um, business page, S3 on of Faith Movement, and my website, and my life. It has to be the same. I mean, you never know who's watching you. I did not know. I mean, I knew when she told me. But I thank God that when she said it, I didn't have to go back and delete some stuff. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, because we don't think about that thing. I mean, we really don't. We take it for granted. We know we post stuff. And I'm telling you, my method of Facebook is I will text myself a message sometime. And I wait for God's approval. Because it may not be the time to post it. So I'm very careful of what I put out there because I know people are watching. I mean, you get an inbox, that blessed me. And I'm like, what message blessed you? I had to go back and look and see. But you never know what someone is depending on just from you showing up on Facebook. So we all have a mandate. And it's the, the birthing month. So I think everyone have some paper and you got a pen. My assignment for you is to write down what are you believing God for before this year is over. Before this year is over. Before midnight on December 31st. What are you believing God for? And those things that you're writing down tonight that you believe in God for, you're going to have to decree and declare by faith. Because now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. So it's a faith walk. But we have to see it 2020. We have to see it the way Jesus sees it. We got to see it clear. 
and we have to see it manifested. And I'm not talking about something easy that you can do. <laughs> because if you can do it, it's you. It's not God. So I'm talking about some things by faith that we need God to do. Some impossible, something that seems impossible. That you're willing to start tonight, 9, 19, 19. That God, I'm going to be focused I'm going to be intentional with my walk with you. I'm going to take time out and pray and fast and do whatever it needs to do to see this, these things come to pass. I mean, she's talking about, I'm a week away from the conference. You're 17 days from becoming Lady Brown. So I'm, I'm certain that everybody here, we got something that we got a mandate on. There are some things that we are really, okay, I need this to come to pass, you know? And God is able to do it. But first of all, you got to believe it. You have to convince yourself. I told Satan when they gave me all these side effects of all this medical report, all the medicine I was going to be taking, and this is the side effect for the A, the letter, it was ABVD, the abbreviation of the medication. And this is a side effect for A, this is a side effect for B, this is a side effect for the V, and this is a side effect for the, the D. And I said, I'm not having none of those. I said, I just need you to remember Job. Job was considered, and I was considered. And I promise you, when I walked in from the doctor's office, that's the conversation I had when I walked in my bedroom. I said, Satan, go sit down in the corner, and you're going to watch me live. I'm not going to be walking around here nauseated. I mean, every side effect that they said I could have from the medication, I decree and declare by faith I was not going to have it. And I can testify. I can give you my kid's number, and you can call them and say, your mama spoke at the, at the meeting tonight, and she said that she didn't have side effects. Is that true? And they'll be like, it's true. Because I believe God. You know, I, I truly did. I, I really take God at his word. And he has not failed. And he will not fail us. But the only thing he wants to do is trust him. Can we, like we said in these chairs tonight, can we rest in God like that? Can we just have that assurance in God that no matter what we're going through, we can rest in him knowing that we are not defeated because he's victorious. That means we are victorious. That means that we have the victory already. It's already declared in heaven. We're just waiting to see the manifestation on earth. And once we get that in our mindset, we can see things change. We have to have a vision. So if you're going to write a book, you need to have the vision of how you want that cover your book. If you believe in God for a house, you need to start looking for the house. You need to have a picture of it. When I was believing God for a car, right now on my mirror, there's that picture of that car. I was believing God for it. I was believing God to do a Night of Laughter comedy show. I had the flyer before I had the date. But I believed God. So the word of the Lord said, without a vision, we perish. So what's your vision? Can you see it? 2020. Can you see it clear? Can you see it like it's mine? And once you get that clear vision of it, before you know it, you walk into it. Because it's already yours. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Everything belongs to us. But are we calling it ours? Are we calling it that it belongs to someone else? When you start calling it, I call it healing mine. And healing became mine. I wrote journal throughout the whole time I was going through my chemotherapy treatment. So when the diagnosis came back that I was cancer free, I didn't have to like figure out what I was going to write about because I journaled throughout the journey. When I went to the doctor and it wasn't a good day, I wrote a prayer in my journal. So when I got to chapter one and I had to have a prayer, I had already written a prayer. So when you take that time out and you write and you journal, 
and you see it, I mean, God will speak to you, and it doesn't make sense at the beginning. It did not make sense to be going to the doctor's office with a journal and writing. But when the journey was over, and it was a time to write the book, the only thing I had to do was go back and look at all my notes. Because everything was there. And it was from the beginning, the first chapter is a victim. Because at the first time when I got the diagnosis, I said, okay, yeah, I'm a victim. The medical report says I have stage three cancer. And the only reason it wasn't stage four, you guys, it did not affect any of my organs. And the doctors was confused. It was like, you have stage three, which and it should be stage four, but the only reason we can't say stage four, because none of your organs are affected. They're close to your organs, but it didn't touch your organs. I said, okay. That was God. The second chapter was Vanguard, and that's talking about in the process of going through the journey, how I had to go through it, and even when the results came back that it was you know, recurrent and operable, going to Emory, that's chapter two, and the third chapter of the book is victory. Yeah, because from victim to victory, but really, it was from victory to victim. Because I already had the victory when I got to be the victim. So we already victorious. The fight is already fixed. But the thing is, how do we see it? Do we see it 2020? So many times we don't. When we look at our checking account, it may not look the way it should look. But what does God's checking account look like? He don't, he don't care about our checking account. What's your faith account? Because I can honestly tell you, if it was up to my checking account and doing a major conference next weekend, flying somebody in and got four main speakers, plus bringing in audio and all that thing, I would have said, let me speak next month. Yeah. <laughs> But when you know who your daddy is, when you know who your father is, when you know God to be your provider, you don't let nothing stop you. You show up on assignment because while I'm standing here on assignment, I promise you God is working things out. It's already worked out. He already did it. But the thing is, can you keep moving when it don't seem like you're moving. Because we're all moving, but even if it don't seem like we're moving, you're moving. You're not the same place where you was in January. Your faith is not the same when it was January. And if it was when you leave here tonight, it's gonna to be at a whole different place. Because my mission is to increase anybody's faith. That's my assignment. I want to make sure that you see your life how God sees your life. I want to make sure that you have that faith that nothing can stop me. Because really, nothing can but you. If I decide to stop talking right now, it's because I decide to stop talking. If I, and the crazy thing is, we were talking about the Unstoppable Faith Conference. I said, even if I wanted to cancel, how do you cancel a faith conference? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and not only a faith conference, but unstoppable. Yeah. I mean, what do, you, what do you tell people? I think I'm just going to help Trump build that wall. <laughs> I mean, because you can't recover from it. I mean, honestly, how do you say, I cancel the conference because I don't have faith? I mean, you can't. Okay, my faith stopped. So I'm just going to take a, a sabbatical because my faith stopped. You can't do it. You cannot. So just like that, tonight, you guys can't stop. It's time to go. 
It's time to birth those things that you've been believing God for. We did Travailing to Win a couple of weeks ago. And I'm telling you how good God is. It was called the birthing room. That was the theme God gave me. And God allowed a lady to walk in with a newborn baby. Pastor Lydia held the baby up, and it was just like, and so when we started praying for people, she told them to hold the baby. Because so many times, when you have a baby, if anyone, if you didn't have a baby, you was around someone that has, has a child, you protect that child. You protect your baby. You don't take that baby and, you know, you have the baby discharged from the hospital. You don't tell your neighbor, here's the baby. I'll come back and get the baby when that child turned 13. You take care of the baby. You do everything you can for the baby. So that's what God wants us to do. We are pregnant for things of God. He wants us to take care of it. But he wants us to to work on it. I mean, we got to we gotta see it come to pass. I mean, was it easy launching on Stop of Faith? No. But anything worth doing for God, you're going to have some tests and trials with it. But it's a testing of your faith. And you can't stop. You have to keep on moving. So each one of you guys, you're pregnant with destiny. You're pregnant with greatness. You're pregnant with impossibilities. Because there's nothing impossible. With God, all things are possible. But we have to believe it. And we have to receive it by faith. So I encourage you on tonight. Hold on to God. Don't let him go. And we talked about the, the four friends. And see, the thing about it is, when I am blessed by God, and you're connected to me, you're blessed by the connection. Because you'll see, God did it for Pastor Lydia. That's going to make your faith increase and be like, well, he's in the room. So if he did it for Pastor Lydia, I'm in the room, so I'm next. It's not time to get discouraged and feel like, well, why she got blessed? No, you rejoice with her because she got her blessing. And because we're in proximity to each other, we're sisters in Christ, my blessing is next. So... Because she's getting married. Where the single ladies at? Okay. Let's rejoice with her. You see what I'm saying? It's not time to be like, well, God, why he found her? Why, where's mine? No, celebrate her wedding. Serve her for her wedding. Ask her what she need. Work with her. Because your time is coming. But we can delay it because of jealousy. The hidden things that nobody know about. The hidden things that we try to hide. You know, like, why not me? Why not now? Why not celebrate somebody else's breakthrough? Because you don't know what she had to labor to get there. Even though it looks glamorous, but I'm certain there's some days and nights that she didn't know that this day would come to pass. But now that it's here, it's time to celebrate what God is doing in her life and then Next time you know, we'll be celebrating what God's doing in your life. We'll be celebrating what God is doing in your life. So it's all about connection. It's all about the mindset. So your theme, one of the things that um, the statement, I think, was is movement. So just like Unstoppable Faith is Unstoppable Faith movement. What you guys are doing is a movement. Christian Women in Media is a movement. And Pastor Lita said we're going to connect with other some people, get some more people to come in. But keep moving. Never despise small beginnings. Never despise it. Because God hand is upon your life and God is working behind the scene. But what he's checking is your obedience in the beginning. Can you treat it as if, if the vision is to have 200 people in here? Can you, can you treat it as if 200 people is already in here? When the conference started, I did not know. I think the room accommodated like 120 people. I didn't know who was going to show up. I mean, I can honestly tell you, every year I've done this conference, I've had less than maybe 25 people to register. But the day of the conference, I had at least 100 people in the room. 
But if I allow what I saw, I would not have kept moving. But I had to hear what God said and see what God see. So don't think that just because it does not look the way you want it to look, long as it lines up to what God has spoken, God will meet the need. God will send people from wherever he has to because his name on it is, is, is not my name. And I remind God, this, this is not my name. This is, not, this is you. I'm just the vessel that you're using. So you guys have to look at your life as that. God, this is you. I'm your daughter. I'm your son. You get the glory out of my life. Use me for your glory. And when you say those things to God, you'll see it. He will not fail you. He will hold you, and you'll see everything that you believe in come to pass. So I am honored to be able to share that with you. I hope I blessed you guys. If anyone have any questions, um, I don't uh, know how the format. Do you mind me just having a chat talk? Okay. Okay. I went through one editor, two editors, three editors. I went through your book is too religious. You talk about God too much in your book. Nobody's going to buy your book. Who's your audience? Who want to read about cancer? And these are from church folks. I'm just being honest with you. You ask the question, I'll be honest. I'll be very, I'll be very transparent. That's what I went through. But I remember who told me to write the book. None of them that had an opinion told me to write the book. God said to write the book. And the way God gave me to write the book, it was if someone else picked the book up, whether they had dealt with cancer or not, their faith will be strengthened. If they never picked up the Bible, they will have scriptures, they will have prayer that will get them to know God. So even when the opposition came, you have to know who's speaking. Satan will use anybody. I mean, he will. Anybody. Anybody that's willing to let him speak through them. So I had some close friends that said it was not the right book. A lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, I did. But it didn't stop me because what I needed from God <clears throat> was greater than their opinion. Because so many times people have cancer come out of remission. And sometimes it's because of disobedience. I would always be obedient to God, rather a friend. And what he said was, write the book. He didn't say, write the book with my friend's approval. So when God said, do something, you do it. And even when negativity comes, you don't let it stop you. I mean, I appreciate it. And they're still my friends. I mean, honestly, they're still my friends. Because that was their opinion. Whether they buy the book or not, it doesn't matter. But God is pleased because I did what he told me to do. So when something comes up and it, you know, it shakes your faith and it makes you question why someone said what they said, count it all joy. I mean, that's, I mean, that's just how I, I took it. You know, I, I didn't let it stop me. I just went to somebody else. And then I had some friends that, you know, publishers or whatever, and the price they gave me was like outrageous, like $2,400. $3,000? said, I haven't worked since 2013. I mean, really? So I did self-publishing. The book is done. So don't let nothing, no one, you know, 
stop you. I mean, I, I take the negativity and I'd be like, okay, I heard it, but I don't dwell on it. Yeah. Did that answer? Yeah. Yes. My, um, it's more of a, it's not a question. I just want to say, um, I thank God for you. Because when you was using that, um, the, um, pregnant, and, um, you know, analogy, it's so crazy because last week I had a dream that I was pregnant. And I didn't know I was pregnant until so I was six months pregnant. And I had three months left for um, my due date. But when I woke up, you know, uh, I was thinking about it, you know, um, going over it. God showed me that it wasn't me like being physically pregnant. But it, um, he showed me past the set. When he get up and get a word, like, my back hurt. That's because he's going to deliver, you know, birth out a word. And that's what God was showing me, that it was something spiritual. And, like, the fact that you, you know, got up there and excused. I mean, you just said what you said. It's confirmation. And I'm excited. I'm really excited. Like, I really, I've really, i been fighting for my intimacy with God and, like, the connection to be, like, like this. So... I'm grateful for him using you to like confirm like what he's been seeing. And like it's just like I <laughs> we bless God for confirmation. I mean truly I, I bless God for confirmation. Um, but just stay in that place. Keep that hunger. They that hunger after righteousness shall be filled. So everything that you desire from God you're going to see the manifestation of it because you're humble and you want him. I mean, one thing about God, he's not going to force himself on no one. He gives us a choice, and you're making a very good choice. Yeah. yeah. And you have labor pains with it. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that you're not going to go through something. You know, my cliche is when your back, they say your back was against the wall. No, you're back the wall. I'm talking about those days when that's the wall and your back is like inside of it because there's so much coming on, coming up against you, but you don't let it stop you because you know God is with you.